Hello, friends, and welcome back to Stories About Entitled People. Today, we have a brand new set of great stories for you to enjoy. Our first story about how Crazy Karen learned an important lesson from a regular traffic controller. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you don't miss a new video every single day. Sit comfortably. Here we go. Want to try and belittle me? I'll make you late for your precious flight. I work for a contracting company in Pennsylvania. I work as a traffic controller, meaning I'm the guy that sets up the traffic cones and signs at construction sites, as well as hold the sign with stop on one side and slow on the other. As you can guess, because I'm sure some of you do just a little bit, people hate me when I'm at work. I get constant remarks and comments thrown at me simply because I inconvenience people a few minutes on their commute. But I don't give a crap because I'm making sure the workers, my co-workers, and the drivers are all safe and no one gets hurt or killed. I also don't give a crap about what people say about me as I have pretty thick skin. So one day I'm working a job with four other traffic controllers. Usually it's only two, me and someone else, but we were at a busy intersection so we needed more people. I was at the top of a hill which flowed into a huge S-bend before the intersection. I was there to make sure that people slowed down before the bend to avoid them blowing past or hitting my coworker at the bottom. I was to only stop traffic when I was radio to. This was only for the few times the work trucks were moving out of the work zone. Things were going smoothly at first. Eventually I got the call to hold traffic so I flipped my sign to stop and traffic comes to a stop, perfectly fine. Then I hear it. A few cars down the line, a woman is blaring her horn non-stop and screaming out the window of her Mercedes. This Karen is just wailing that I stopped everyone. She eventually gets out of her car and comes stomping up to me. Now I can't leave my post, however I was fully prepared to whack this bee with my sign if needed. She finally reaches me and says this, What the F are you doing? I'm holding the traffic, ma'am. Let us through, I have to be at the airport. I'm sorry, ma'am, but we have workers moving down there. You're just going to have to wait. This is effing ridiculous. Just tell them to move. I have to go. Yeah, it was that exaggerated. I'm sorry. And she cuts me off. Listen, you heroin addicted, good for nothing slime ball. Get the F out of my way and do your effing job. She storms back to her car. Again, I have thick skin, so I didn't care about the comment. However, I'm so not against some good old malicious compliance. She wants me to do my job? Well, all righty then. I get the call to let traffic through and begin to do so. I noticed the two cars that were behind Karen had turned off onto side roads, so she was the last one in the line. Oh, perfect, I think to myself. I radio down to the guy at the bottom of the hill and tell him I'll be holding traffic for a bit. By law in Pennsylvania, I can hold traffic for 15 minutes. So I decide to use that to get some malicious compliance on Karen. I let the car in front of her go and stop her. She starts back up again. What the F are you doing? Sorry, ma'am. There's an obstruction in the road. You'll need to wait till it's moved. What was the obstruction, you ask? Well, it was my lunchbox that I threw into the middle of the road after stopping her. She went off for 15 minutes on me about how she's going to miss her flight and how I'm a dirty convict. I've never been to jail, by the way. 15 minutes goes by and I move my lunchbox and let her through. Thankfully, only one other car came by in that time and it turned off into a driveway, so I wasn't inconveniencing any innocent people here. She pulls up and yells at me and asks, What the F were you doing, craphead? I reply with a very snarky, Just doing my job, ma'am. She drives away in a huff. When we finished up, the others asked what I was doing and I told them what happened. They thought it was the funniest crap they'd heard that week. I don't know if she was late for her flight, but I hope she was. Moral of the story, kids, don't F with traffic controllers. We can F up your day more than you think. And our next story. I ignore customers because the boss said so. After graduating college, I worked for about six months as a cashier at a local branch of a chain sandwich shop. Mostly it was a great job. Customers were mostly polite, my co-workers were friendly and helpful, and I genuinely believed in the company's products. Even my bosses were pretty great, except for one. We'll call him The Jerk. The Jerk was belligerent, vindictive, nitpicky, and pretty much an awful boss in every way a boss can be awful. 
He had the type of crappy, no excuses policy that defined excuse as literally anything besides, yes, sir, of course, sir. I could go on and on about all the different ways he was terrible, but this story's about one specific flavor of his awfulness. During our shifts, each employee had a certain section of the store they were assigned to keep clean in addition to their duties. The cashier section was the front counter and displays and the coffee kiosk. I don't know if it was officially the manager's job, but as long as I worked there, whoever was the shift manager always took care of the outside patio area. Except for the jerk. At first, he would just say things like, I'm really busy right now, could you clean the patio? Which was fine. Part of the job description stated that if you had free time and the manager asked you to do something extra, you did it. He was well within his rights. But one day, he suddenly started asking me why I was shirking my duties by not keeping the patio clean. After all, the patio was part of my section. It wasn't. Never had been. I asked the other cashiers, and they all agreed they'd never been told anything about the patio being part of the cashier section. I didn't mind helping out with the patio if my other cashier duties were done, but it irked me that he'd taken something extra I was doing to be helpful and turned it into something that I was neglecting my duties if I didn't do. It felt like a bait and switch, and I felt cheated. The bigger problem, though, was that keeping the patio clean through my entire shift was a huge pain for me as a cashier. In the afternoons, I was often the only one at the counter, and customers would trickle in with a few minutes between each group. This meant that I was constantly having to run back and forth between the patio and the register, which confused customers and made it hard to get any actual work done on the patio. One day, when this was particularly bad, the jerk came up front and started asking me why I hadn't cleaned the patio. I started to explain that I kept having to come back inside to serve customers, but he cut me off. I don't remember his exact words, but it was something along the lines of, that's no excuse. Cleaning the patio's your job. Now go outside and do your job. Don't come back inside until the patio's clean. The last sentence was music to my ears. I assured him that of course I would do exactly as he said, went outside and started cleaning. A few minutes later, a family walked past me through the front doors into the store. Through the large front window, I watched them stand, confused, in front of the register. There was no one at to serve them. The jerk had gone back into his office to attend to his oh-so-important manager duties. I continued to clean the patio. A few minutes later, another family came in and joined the first, standing, confused, and now annoyed in front of the counter. At this point, the jerk must have noticed them on the security camera because he came out of his office and started ringing them up. Then came another set of customers, and another. The jerk was at the register, so he had to serve them. He was now being forced to cover my job because I was too busy doing his. I finished cleaning the patio and came inside, and the jerk immediately tore into me, asking where I'd been, why I wasn't at the counter. Couldn't I see there were customers? I put on my most innocent smile, but you told me not to come back inside until I'd finished cleaning the patio. I assumed that meant you would take care of serving customers since I couldn't possibly be two places at the same time. He just glared at me for the longest moment, then mumbled something about how I should have known what he meant, and I was never to pull a stunt like that again, and he shuffled back to his office. Not much of a victory in the grand scheme of things, but seeing the momentary flash of panic in his eyes as he realized his do as I say no excuses policy had backfired had me giddy for the rest of the day. Our last story. It's only fair, right? I work at a logistics company and my job is to find drivers to take freight from A to B. I work with the same trucking companies a lot, but sometimes I get one-off drivers. This is one of those. A truck driver calls me asking about a load for the next morning coming out of Laredo, Texas, going to Portland, Oregon. What's the rate? We can pay $3,500 on it, I tell him. How about $4,000? Sorry, customer's strict about the rate on this one. Has to be $35. Oh, man, I need this. I need to get home to see my son and my wife's sick. And we need $35 on it. Customer will not go higher. This guy ends up taking it. If you think I'm being too hard on him, keep in mind there really isn't a whole lot heading from Texas to Oregon at any given time, so I could try to get him his rate, but I'd risk losing the load to another driver, if he really needs to get back, why does he want to go back and forth negotiating on price and risk it? The answer is because he's full of crap. The next morning, I get a call from the customer saying that the facility that's receiving the freight has been changed 
it's still going to be in Portland, just in a different place. Something like a 20 to 30 mile difference tops should be a complete non-issue considering the driver has just started a 2200 mile journey. It's a drop in the bucket. I call him back. Hey, just a heads up, receiver called to say that it's going to deliver at a different address. It's XXXX Portland, Oregon. Oh, well, can you send me rate confirmation with a little bit more money? What do you mean? Agreements change. Need to renegotiate. Seriously? It's like a 20 to 30 mile difference from the original one. 20 to 30 miles is kind of a long way to go. Me humoring him. Okay, what do you think you need for the new rate? Eh, 4,000 should do it. Oh, really? The original rate you wanted, huh? What a coincidence. Are you serious? It's only fair. I put the driver on hold just to spite him for trying to handle me like that, and I start working on something else. Out of curiosity, I check the address for the original delivery facility compared to the new one. Turns out the new receiver is actually 25 miles closer to the shipper in Laredo. New travel distance is 2,175 miles. I pick his line back up. Hey, we'll change the rate after all. Okay, send to me the confirmation. Okay, we ran the miles and the new receiver is actually 25 miles closer to Laredo, so we're going to need to reduce the rate to 3,000. What, what, what are you talking about? Well, we're cutting 25 miles off the trip and it's kind of a lot of miles to cut. It's only fair, right? Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video and I'll see you in the next one.